The origin of Satan's first evil desire can be traced back to the time when God created him as an angel. All angels, including Satan, were formed by God through the ministry of his son, Jesus, as stated in John chapter 1 verse 3, which affirms that nothing was created without God's involvement. However, since God is holy and cannot directly create evil, it is evident from both reason and the Bible that all angels were initially created in a state of holiness. Each angel is a direct creation of God. When Satan rebelled against God, he not only incurred God's wrath for himself but also persuaded some angels to join him in turning against God. While estimates vary, some suggest that about one-third of the angels followed Satan's lead. At this point, Satan and his angels became genuinely evil and hostile towards God, his plan, and the humans he created. Significant chapters like Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 12 to 19 and Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 17 are often associated with Satan's original state and fall. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 17 depicts the downfall of the morning star, which is often interpreted as referring to Satan. It illustrates how Satan, in his pride, desired to ascend to the heavens and exalt himself above the stars of God, seeking to be like the Most High. However, his rebellion led to his ultimate defeat and condemnation. Before his fall, Satan enjoyed immense power, prestige, and beauty. He belonged to the cherub class of angelic beings, considered one of the greatest and highest orders. He resided in God's presence and walked amid the stones of fire. Satan's nature, position, habitation, and perfection all contributed to his exalted state. However, Satan's pride and self-obsession led to his downfall. He became arrogant because of his beauty, leading to the corruption of his wisdom and the manifestation of sin. Jesus referred to witnessing Satan's fall like lightning from heaven, cautioning against pride and emphasizing its role as the root sin that gives rise to all others. Satan's sin was particularly heinous for several reasons. It marked the beginning of a revolt against the Holy God, and it occurred despite his initial state of perfection and wisdom. His rebellion resulted in the loss of his holiness and corruption of his personality. Satan's sin of pride and rebellion against God led to his indictment and punishment, including his expulsion from the presence of God. Although Satan's doom is certain, his influence and power are still felt until the final judgment, when he will be confined to the lake of fire. His sin of pride and self-assertion is evident through his declarations of, I will, in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 to 14, where he aspired to ascend above his created position and rule in a manner akin to God. The exact time of Satan's fall is not explicitly revealed in the Bible, but it can be deduced that it occurred after the initial creation of the heavens and the earth. Satan's fall predates the temptation of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, but whether it happened before or after their creation remains unknown. It is important to note that Satan has angels who obey his commands and fight for his causes. These fallen angels, often referred to as demons, are part of Satan's kingdom. The Bible affirms their existence and their association with Satan, reinforcing the spiritual battle between good and evil. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 describes a great war in heaven between Michael and his angels and the dragon, which is identified as Satan. This passage suggests that there was a rebellion among the angels, led by Satan, resulting in a battle against the forces of good. The outcome of this war is recorded in Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, where it states that Satan and his angels were defeated and cast out of heaven. They were no longer allowed to reside in the presence of God, and their eternal destiny was sealed. They were condemned to the abyss, awaiting their final judgment and punishment. Throughout history, Satan and his fallen angels have continued their opposition against God and his creation. They actively seek to deceive, tempt, and lead humanity astray from the path of righteousness. Satan's ultimate goal is to undermine God's plan and to separate people from a relationship with their Creator. Despite their evil intentions, it is important to note that Satan and his angels are limited in power compared to God. They are created beings and are subject to God's authority. Their ultimate defeat is assured, as prophesied in various biblical passages, including Revelation chapter 20 which describes their final judgment and the casting of Satan into the lake of fire for eternity. In the face of this spiritual battle, it is crucial for individuals to remain steadfast in their faith, seek the guidance of God, and resist the temptations and deceptions of Satan. 
By relying on the power and grace of God, believers can overcome the forces of evil and find strength in their relationship with him. It is important to note that the precise details of Satan's origin, his rebellion, and the nature of angels are not explicitly outlined in the Bible. The passages mentioned earlier provide some insights and symbolism, but the full understanding of these spiritual matters is beyond human comprehension. Therefore, it is advisable to approach these topics with humility, relying on the teachings of scripture and seeking a deeper understanding through prayer and study. In addition to the biblical accounts, the concept of fallen angels and the battle between good and evil has been explored and expanded upon in various religious and literary traditions. These interpretations often delve into the motivations and characteristics of fallen angels, offering different perspectives on their origins and roles in the cosmic struggle. One prominent example is John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, which presents a detailed narrative of the fall of Satan and his cohorts. Milton portrays Satan as a complex figure, full of pride and rebellion, who seeks to challenge God's authority and establish his own kingdom. The poem explores themes of free will, temptation, and the consequences of disobedience, providing a nuanced portrayal of the fallen angels' motivations and the cosmic consequences of their actions. Other religious and mythological traditions also depict fallen or rebellious celestial beings. For instance, in Islamic theology, there is the concept of Iblis, who is identified as Satan and is believed to have disobeyed God's command to bow down to Adam. Similarly, in ancient Greek mythology, there are stories of the Titans, powerful divine beings who rebelled against the Olympian gods. While these interpretations and artistic representations offer imaginative and thought-provoking perspectives on the nature of fallen angels, it is essential to approach them with discernment and recognize that they go beyond the scriptural accounts. The Bible remains the primary source for understanding the spiritual realm and the conflict between good and evil. Ultimately, the belief in fallen angels serves as a reminder of the ongoing spiritual battle and the need for individuals to remain vigilant, discerning, and rooted in their faith. By understanding the nature of this conflict and relying on God's strength and guidance, believers can resist the influences of evil and contribute to the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. In conclusion, while the Bible provides limited details about the origin and rebellion of Satan and his angels, it presents a clear picture of their opposition to God and their ultimate defeat. The battle between good and evil is an ongoing spiritual struggle, and individuals are called to stand firm in their faith relying on God's power and grace to overcome the temptations and deceptions of the enemy.